You see, he was 20 years old at the time. And it's unfortunate because he started to look to people that didn't have his best interest. People that really did not care about who he was. See, at the age of 20, he himself did not know who he was. See, this man was a king. He was a king over a large area at the age of 20. And he stored up, he had all these treasures for the Lord. And he squandered it for a false sense of security. You see, at the age of 20, he had a son. And because of his lack of trust in God... And his, and his his trust in himself and his enemy, he took his son and he sacrificed him. He set his own son on fire and killed him to pagan gods, to idols, because he thought it was the right thing to do because he had a misplaced trust. See, my friends, as we... Wrap up this abide theme as we go into this winter break. My hope for you is that you can go into this break knowing that God is with you and that He is worthy to be trusted. You can trust Him. That's what abide means trusting in the Lord being with him. So pray with me and we will hop right into this. Lord, thank you, God, for being so good, so worthy of praise. Lord, we thank you for getting us through this semester. It's not quite done. So Lord, I pray for any anxiety, any fear in this room, any last minute assignments that need to be turned in. I pray for energy because y'all need it. And Lord, just speak through me. Be my words, Lord. Touch hearts in here tonight. Change lives, Lord. Have people come running back into your arms, Jesus. You are trustworthy. We love you. And we pray all this in your name. Everyone said, amen. All right, so we are going to be in the book of Isaiah tonight. Isaiah 7. Verses 1 through 12 is what we're going to be focusing on. More so the latter part of that. But I need to give you a little bit of context. So the book of Isaiah was written by Isaiah. Yeah, it's not a trick question. Isaiah wrote Isaiah. Although there's argument to it if you wrote all that. That doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about. So Isaiah wrote this book. In Isaiah 6, he had this encounter with God. He went up to meet God. An angel touched his tongue with a piece of coal. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this story. And he was forgiven and uh, signifying the forgiveness of sins for God's people. And God is using Isaiah to speak to his people and to tell them, hey, Put your trust in God. Put your hope in God or your own destruction will come. They will be the cause of their own destruction. And so many times in our life, we are the cause of our own destruction. And we so often blame God for it. So that is a little bit of the context. Um, he is commissioned at this point and he is told to go to Ahaz, King Ahaz, the man that I just got done telling a little bit of his story. He is going to Ahaz, telling him that he needs to trust in God and not trust in his enemies. And so verse 1 of Isaiah 7 says, When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramalia, 
king of Israel marched up to fight against Jerusalem, Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Okay, so this is a little bit, this is David's succession. Ahaz came from David's line, and it's ironic because David was fearless while Ahaz was, was fearful. David trusted God while Ahaz did not trust God. A little bit of geography so you guys know where I'm at because there's a whole lot of words up there that are like, what the heck? Um, as we see, we have the northern and the southern kingdom of Israel. It's split apart after Solomon's death. And so the southern kingdom, the little red area, not the super red area, but the red area next to the super red area, that's where King Ahaz was king over, that little place right there. And the place right above that, the blue place, that is uh, uh, the king of Israel, he, sorry, he and king A, the king of Aram were coming to King Ahaz saying, hey, come hop on our team. We're going to go against the ultimate power, which was Assyria, which is way up to the upper right. But Ahaz was like, nah, I don't want to. Um, and what he did actually, this keeps changing, it's killing me. Um, what he did was actually team up with the king of Assyria, not knowing that it was going to cause his own destruction. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So verse 2, now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the heart of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. My friends, what you have to realize is that what God does in and through you is not just for you. You have to realize that your life, the lifestyle that you live, not only impacts yourself, it impacts every single person that you are in proximity with. So Ahaz this leadership, had, had this leadership that was full of fear, full of not trusting God. And what it caused is every single person around him to be fearful as well. Every single person under him was shaken. Their hearts were shaken, as Scripture says right here. I'm going to read verses 3 through 9, and we're going to go back a little bit. Then the Lord said to Isaiah... Go out, you and your son, Shear, Jeshub, Jeshub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launderer's field. Say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. You guys know those shirts that say, keep calm, don't be afraid? It started here. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and of the son of Ramalia. Aram, Ephraim, and Ramalia's son have plotted your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tobel king over it. Let, yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only resin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The heart of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Ramalia's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. See, God told Isaiah... Not Ahaz. He told Isaiah, I want you to go out. I want you to meet Ahaz. And I want you to encourage him, telling him that, hey, hey, Ahaz, if you trust in me, only a remnant, this name, Shear Jashub, that is Isaiah's son, what that transcribes into is a remnant will return, meaning that only a few of these people from the northern kingdom and from the kingdom of Aram will return, only a few of them will return if Ahaz trusts in God. But as we know, he does not. He does not trust in God. He trusts in himself. He trusts in his enemy, Assyria, who actually helped him at first, but then took over him.
Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. God's saying these two things, these two people that are going against you, they are nothing compared to who I am. My friends, the challenges that you face in life, the things that you face in life, they are nothing compared to the God that we serve. Nothing compared. The moments that you are going through in this time, I bet you, I bet you a lot of you have gone through a really rough season. A rough semester in school. I bet you a lot of you. And a lot of you are probably tired and you're fed up. You're probably so anxious in your heart. So afraid. And God's saying, look to me, trust in me, because I am bigger than that. It will not take place. It will not happen. The head of Ephraim is Samaria. I'm at verse 9. I know I've been jumping around. And the head of Samaria is only Ramalia's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. I'm going to ask my man Jake if he can come up here. <sighs> Friends, we are college students in our 20s. Um, Jake, if you could stand right here. And what happens so many times is that when we start to put too much trust in things other than God, we realize that they fail us. When we put too much trust in an individual, I'm not saying you're not allowed to trust people because we have been called to trust and to be trusted. But what I'm saying is that when someone or something takes the position of God, it gets manipulated. Sin takes what is good and twists it. It manipulates it. So this is what happens so often. We get ourselves, we're, we're in relationships with our family, with our friends, with uh, a loved one, with a romantic relationship. And slowly they start to take the position of God without even us recognizing it. And what happens is we, they, 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 they catch us. This is what happens. They catch us. So this is known as a trust fall. Please catch me because I'll die if you don't. Trust fall. They catch us. We keep leaning on them. We keep leaning on them. It's getting a little tired though. They're getting a little tired, a little discouraged. It's probably a really awkward position. But then they drop us. They drop us. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. <laughs> they drop us. And we get so discouraged and we start to blame them and we start to blame God. Why don't you just hold me up? I put everything I trusted in you completely. Why well, weren't you there to hold me up? Because, friends, you were never supposed to lean on someone too much to where it takes God off of the throne. Or we do it with our stuff. I got my Adidas here, my Adidas hat. I like Adidas. I like red, too. I actually hated red because of my hair color, but I love it now. We have watches, jewelry, video games. Uh, working out image. We have these guys, you know, these guys, phones. We, we, we put, we start to put our trust in all of these things, all these, uh, these things that define us so easily. We have money, our was, what kind of car we drive, all these things. And what happens is that we're like, yeah, I got all this stuff. You know, I'm cool. God who? And we start to, you know, lean a little bit on it. Lean too much. And then what happens is. Now what? 
We put all of our trust, we put all of our dependence on our image, on our identity, on this false sense of identity that we have created because we have not put our identity in Christ. We have forgotten who he says that we are. We start to put it in these things. I myself do this, friends. This is not a word of condemnation. That is not what I'm trying to say. Because I myself do this all the time. I put my trust in these things, thinking that they'll give me a sense of security. I start leaning on them too much, and then all we have here is a mess. A complete mess. And I feel like so many of you, so many of you are going through this season to where you feel like your life is, is just a mess. Everything has fallen apart. All of these things that we have leaned on as a people of God have failed us time and time and time again. And our lives just turn out to be a mess. When if we just leaned on God, if we just trusted fully in him, our lives would become more free. We wouldn't be so anxious or, I don't know, in gloom all the time. Verses 10 through 12, again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign. Whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord God to the test. Ahaz was looking righteous because he said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord God to the test. But isn't that what the law says? Don't, don't test the Lord. See, here's the thing. When God says something directly to you, we're supposed to listen. And God was saying this directly to Ahaz. And the reality was he used this as a cop-out. He used this as a way of saying, God, I really just don't want to listen to what you have to say. I really just want to depend on myself and my own understanding. I really just don't want to listen to what you have to say. And I feel like so many of us do that. We go, God, I really just don't want to listen to what you have to say because what you have to say usually means that there needs to be a humility in our heart or, 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 or a life change or, or something that he has asked us to give up, but it's so difficult. This is not a word of condemnation, friends. We all struggle with this. We are all in this together, and we have a Savior who is worthy to be praised, a Savior who took on these things for us so we did not have to suffer for eternity because he loves us. Luke twenty two forty two. Jesus, I think we have a slide of it. There it is. Jesus was in the garden at this time. And guys, Jesus is the best example we have. The best example we have, the incarnation, God becoming man. And Jesus was in the garden at this time and he was sweating blood. It was, he was sweating so hard that there was blood within his sweat because he saw the anguish that was coming. He saw the agony that was coming. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus knew exactly what was coming. He saw the cross. He saw the pain. He saw all of the suffering. But he said this statement. He said, not your, my will, Lord, but yours. That's a dangerous prayer. 
That's an extremely dangerous prayer, but it's the best prayer we can make. Lord, not my will, but yours. And Jesus went to the cross. He trusted God enough. That word, he trusted. He trusted God enough. Guys, let's be a, a generation, this young generation. We're in our 20s. Let's start trusting God with all of our hearts, with all of our lives. Let's lay these things that we have leaned on for too long. These things that give us a false sense of identity. This world that tries to tell you who you are. These things are not necessarily bad. But what we do so often is what sin does is it takes what is good and creates it into something bad and then manipulates it. Guys, let's be a people to where we fall back into the arms of Jesus. To where we trust him more. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here if they would. I'm actually going to ask the prayer leaders if they could also come up here on the sides. They're going to be over to those that side and over to that side. Guys, I want this to be a moment, a time to where God raises this boldness inside of you, this courage inside of you to ask for prayer, to fall back into the arms of Jesus, to be honest with ourself and say, hey, I've been struggling. I've been going through a lot and I have lacked trust in the Lord. I will be honest, I have lacked trust in the Lord. I'm saying that from my heart. I have lacked trust in the Lord this season, guys. And it's killed me. It's absolutely killed me. And I'm like, Lord, why do you want me to speak on this? the worst candidate to speak on this. Friends, let's fall back into the arms of Jesus. Let's trust in him once more because he has never failed us. He will never fail you. He loves you too deeply. This Christmas season's coming. Let's trust in the Lord more, guys. Prayer leaders are up here. We're going to go back into this last song of worship. I encourage you, take this time. And make that step of faith. Make that proclamation that you're saying right here, right now. I'm not going to allow myself to be defined by these things anymore. I'm going to go back into falling into one who's been watching over me all along. Lord, we love you. God, we are so thankful for you. We're so thankful for your son. God, I pray that our hearts will just become more vulnerable, more open, more willing to listen to your voice, Jesus. Help us trust in you with all of our lives. You are good. You've always been good. And you always will be. Lord, we give this night to you.